Okay. So, so I shared the experience in uh, my photo clubs, uh, you know, Facebook group, and I'll, I'll dump that uh, text into the chat after we talk through it. But I'm snowboarding down in Florida. And mm -hmm. when we arrived here, and this is not the, it's not the first time that we've done this, but when we arrived here, what was different was that the external drive that I have now about three terabytes of photos on uh, just sat and made unhappy clicking noises when it was powered oh, on. Oh. And Ooh. it continued to make unhappy clicking sounds uh, even after a prolonged period of some some hours. Now this this is a RAID drive. It's a 20, 20 terabyte Lacey RAID drive that's uh, set up as RAID 1, so full duplication. Oh, good. Uh, so there's two 10 terabyte <laughs> hard drives in that enclosure, and it presents as 10 terabytes to Mac OS, but in fact, it's it's actually updating both of them. And what should happen, and I've actually seen before on a different enclosure from, from Lacey, was that one of the drives may fail, and then it'll tell you, hey, you know, I'm I'm degraded. There's a drive that's failed, but but you're still running. You're only right. running one drive right now. You don't have a a, a live backup and you can you can replace that drive it'll resync them up and everything's fine but in this case that never happened oh. <laughs> so uh you know and i got it's interesting i was talking with some relatives and and you know my my nephew who's a pretty pretty heavy duty engineer was like well did you put it in the freezer and i was like oh. and i've heard that trick with failed hard drives before but i did not put it in the freezer <laughs> Um, instead, what I did was the next business day, I contacted Lacey Technical Support. Right. And I never did find out exactly why this failure occurred. Maybe they'll they'll debug it because after we went through some basic questions to establish that, you know, I had a draw, you know, the device and the serial number and that it was still in warranty and my warranty included uh, data recovery. Mm. You know, he said, well, do you do you have a copy of the data? And I answered that I did. And in fact, I had already recovered it to mm -hmm. a, an empty uh, 10 terabyte external drive that I got. And the reason that that so I did not take up any more of their time and resources trying to get my data back to see if they could have. I, I think there's a pretty good chance they could have because it's mm -hmm. hard for me to believe that both drives physically failed. I think there right. was one physical failure and then some combination of firmware software failures that prevented the enclosure from failing that drive out of service mm -hmm. and we might have even been able with working with support to figure out which one was bad and physically take it out and get it to come online but we didn't try any of that because i said hey i've already got my data back and i already i already know that i brought it up in lightroom and everything's good Mm. because I back that external drive in addition to my internal SSD mm. on my MacBook Pro up to in Time Machine. And I, I, you know, whatever your backup is, you know, having uh, having a daily backup and having some strategy, like I, I use the three, two, one backup strategy where, you know, I've got multiple physical backups and I've got a cloud backup so there's there's always backup that is offline, backup that is current, and backup that is offsite, and that really meant that while I was a little nervous when that happened, I didn't panic because I brought one of my two time machine discs with me, and I have two that I alternate, and so usually about once a month I write the date on the box. I'll physically swap the time machine disk that I'm backing up to and put the other one offline in its original box in, in a closet. And so even should some sort of, you know, ransomware or catastrophic mm -hmm. security event happen that compromised my laptop, there's one that's completely offline and unplugged. So as long as I didn't then plug it into the problematic laptop, it's, it's, a, it's a known good state. And I've got cloud backup through Backblaze uh, where I could also go back to a point in time. And 
I, those those having those different tiers of backup and having them be automatic, you know, more or less to the point of I still do have to if I want to switch backup drives, I have to physically do some you know plugging and unplugging uh, once a month. But that made all the difference between completely freaking out and panicking and being very stressed out and this just being something that I knew as long as I kind of proceeded carefully, I would be back to where I was. And that's what, you know, and that's what I was able to do. So I was, I didn't lose any data uh, because I had, I had done those, I had brought those backups current right before shutting everything down and leaving Pennsylvania. And I also, but I knew that if I did make a misstep somewhere, the kind of the, the, more, the most likely pothole I would get myself in was that I'd have to download everything from the cloud again, or I would have to do without it until I went back to Pennsylvania <laughs> month, or make a quick trip to Pennsylvania to get a <laughs> backup drive. Um, but it all worked out. And so this is just sort of one of my annual pleas for everybody of have your backups, have, have multiple levels, use a strategy like three, two, one, and I'll put some links and stuff in the chat for that. But it, it just, will save you and then get your family members to do the same. If you're the computer literate person in your family circle, get them going. And the cloud backup is the easy one because we just recently set up my my niece and her husband were transitioning from years of just using work computers to do everything to a realization that they needed to have their own personal computers that they owned and kept all their personal business on that and their work PCs were used only for work. And in doing that, you know, the cloud backup was the easiest because it was just like, you need this. And it was just like, tell me where to put my credit card and set it up. Right. And, and it just will work. And I know that it will work in the background and visibly. And that if something goes horribly wrong, they can, they can get a drive sent to them through the mail for a small fee, or they can download all their data again. And it's not losing data because losing losing data is the one thing I'm always concerned about for family members or me, that that's the one that you just want to avoid at all costs. Being out of service temporarily is bad. Losing data is, you know, with so much of our lives being digital now is nightmarish. Yes. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, there's, there's a few different approaches you can take. There's different utilities. And I have another level I didn't talk a lot about because I didn't have to use it which was physically cloning uh, periodically that drive outside of a backup program, but just cloning it as a fully usable copy. Uh, so using something like Carbon Copy Cloner or Super Duper. And I really never met a backup I didn't like. And I even have, like, every time I've changed computers, I have a full backup of the computer at that point in time. So, you know, like if I know that somehow I had something on a mm -hmm. previous laptop, and it's just not on this one in the place I might expect it to be. Maybe it was in some weird app directory. I can go back and get a copy of that old laptop from 2019 or 2015 and see what was what was what was in this directory in 2015. And that has been very useful to me over time. Well, Sam, that's one of the best presentations I've heard about backing up. I mean, I think Jonathan, when Jonathan monitors this save of this talk i think he he might try to collect that snippet and present it and you know post it for people to frequent if you know with your permission but um 